Hi everyone, welcome to the Cocktail Vlog. I'm Steve the Bartender and today I'm showing you how to make a pina colada, specifically a clarified milk punch pina colada version. So it does sound very strange for those who aren't familiar. It's mixing whole milk and acidic ingredients to clarify a product and make the drink come out looking a lot clearer. Um, and the effect that it has actually makes the, there's more cohesion in the ingredients and it removes astringent flavors. So if you're making a punch with a tea, it uh, strips out those tannins um, and makes it taste just really delicious. It sounds difficult, it sounds disgusting, yep. <laughs> but it's actually very easy and it tastes amazing. Basically, I'm doing a recipe that is probably the easiest one that I've found online being the pina colada recipe. A lot of punch recipes do have uh, multiple ingredients. One recipe I came across had 18 ingredients. So this is just purely to show you how simple it actually is. It purely comes down to how patient you are. It can take up to 24 hours. I'm using a falernum, which has multiple spices in it, uh, multiple different ingredients. It's a syrup, it's a sugary syrup. Uh, that will cut down on the number of ingredients you need to use rather than having to build your own um, spices and adding them in, letting them macerate and so forth. But let's get down to actually making it. So, and all these, Measurements. I'm actually doing a, a smaller version because I made this yesterday already, so I have the product ready, to, the drink ready to go. Um, so I'll leave the measurements in the description below. I don't think it's something that you're going to follow along with and make, so you'll really need to refer to that recipe anyway. Uh, start with an aged rum. So I'm measuring out 100, 105 mil, three and a half ounces. Uh, this is the plantation pineapple. It's got pineapple in the drink, it's pina colada, so this is going to work really well in this drink. And then I've got 60 ml of coconut water. Add that in. I keep referring to my recipe because I've made a few changes um, and there's a few ingredients, so my memory's not that good. Uh, 30 ml of falernum. spice syrup that's really popular in tiki drinks. And a big shout out to Katie for utilizing the by the back bar feature. That's open again. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And thank you for the five people that are, have already jumped on. Um, I've got those bottles on the way and they'll be featured on the channel very soon. Next ingredient is pineapple juice. I'm adding 60 milliliter, two ounces. Seven and a half mil quarter ounce of demerara sugar. I figured there's a lot of people in lockdown, so this is probably maybe an ideal time to show you guys how to make this because, well, you do have the time to wait, I guess. We've got fresh lime juice, 22.5 mil, three quarter ounce. Add it straight into your measuring jug. Then we have milk, whole milk. Now people have experimented with different kinds of milk, um, goat's milk, almond milk. It does work with some different kinds of milk. I'll leave that, those kind of details in the description below, but whole milk is the best. Um, and it doesn't, doesn't work that well with low fat or doesn't work at all really. I'm having a blank. I can't remember if I actually mentioned the volume of milk. Uh, 60 ml or two ounces and the ratio of your drink to milk should roughly be four to one. Um, this isn't quite the, the same with those ratios, but that is the ideal number to make sure that the, the milk curdles and this actually works properly. Now, the important part is that you don't want to add the milk to your uh, drink. The reason being is this concoction over here is already acidic. And then as soon as I add the milk in, it will start to curdle immediately. But as if you add the drink into the milk, it slowly lowers the pH of the milk. And then once it reaches below, I think about 4.5, I'm guessing. I'm gonna clarify in the description as well. Uh, once the pH drops and it becomes more acidic, then it starts to curdle once all the drink is mixed through. Scientist Steve. So as I'm adding the drink, I'm making sure I'm kind of pouring it around so it combines all the ingredients together. And now it's starting to curdle. And I'm sure you can see it from there. It looks, looks pretty gross. 
It's going to give it a really gentle stir, mix it all through. And now it comes for the waiting game. This, it, ta it takes a while. You can, you can leave it for like half an hour to an hour, but you're going to get the best results. The, the clearest drink, the clearest finished product if you do leave it in the fridge for 24 hours and you strain it. So hopefully you have room to be able to put that in the fridge. You have a couple of different options. Um, now remember, it's not the strainer, so it's not the coffee filter that's actually straining the ingredients. It's the curds in the, in the drink itself that will strain and make a clearer product. So when you first put the drink into the filter, it will start to settle the curds at the bottom, and it's the curds, as the drink runs through the curd, that makes the clear product. So therefore, you can either utilize a, a tea towel, a cheesecloth, and lay that over a fine mesh strainer. But I feel that the funnel and the coffee filter, whilst being an incredibly slow way to do it, produces really clear results. Reason being, rather than having the liquid drip out through the sides, all the ingredients have to be funneled down to the bottom and run through the highest volume of curds and filtering the, the product in the first place. So pour it straight into your filter. And first of all, it's gonna start pouring relatively fast it's not fast but in comparison to what it's going to be so the initial ingredients that are coming out the initial um, part is going to be not as clear as the second part so you can either run all through and then do a second filter or you can give it a couple of minutes and then then re-filter that initial part now that the curds have settled inside that filter. If you do a second pass, and if you're adding more into the, the drink, then you want to pour it incredibly slow so as not to disturb those curds in the bottom. And that's pretty much it. I'm definitely not gonna make you watch this drip and filter through. So here's one I prepared earlier. As you can see, it's not totally, um, it's not crystal clear, but it is quite translucent. And I think this has been a pretty successful uh, filtration process. That did take about 18 hours of sitting in the fridge and just really, really slow, slow dripping. And this particular batch is about double, double this version here. So preferably you wanna utilize a, a clear, clear cube. And then it really kind of amplifies the clearness and the products that you've just created. Pour it in a glass. And there you have a clarified milk punch pina colada. If you'd like to, you can grate fresh nutmeg over the top, but I'm gonna leave it unspoiled as is. Cheers. It's, it's bizarre because all, all the flavors kind of com combine and meld together really quite nicely. You get this um, soft coconut flavor, this underlying flavor of coconut with the sweetness of the pineapple juice and the citrus, but it's all the harshness is taken out of it. It's a very rounded drink. It's worth making, it's worth being patient just to be able to try this. It's absolutely delicious and you can really experiment with different punch recipes. I'll leave more in the description below. But thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you soon for another cocktail video. Cheers.